I want to talk about humility and that you're giving a zillion dollars away, but Mario on 26th Street is still doing your haircut right. for $17 right. a haircut. Mr. Buffett in Omaha this weekend, the same way. You, you, it's a simpler life. What do you say to the extravagances that you see today out of so many? It's none of my business. They want to live extravagantly, live extravagantly. None of my business. You don't want to give money to charity, that's your call. I choose, my wife and I choose to share our good fortune. I can tell you right now, I thought making it was fun. I'm having so much more fun giving it away. To see those kids that day, last August, respond to the statement they no longer had to pay tuition to go to our medical school. Mm -hmm. At NYU. I felt like a king. I felt like, holy smokes, maybe my life matters. So much of this is about fairness and the idea of a gilded age. And then we've got the politics of the moment, which we'll talk about here uh, in a bit. Are we in a gilded age? Is there, are there inequalities that harken back to a time of Teddy Roosevelt? Life is not fair. Life is not fair. Don't ask me, ask our creator why it's not fair. I think about my brother. I had all the good fortune, and he had none of it. He died at 35 years old. Everything, I live the American dream, okay? I think of my cousins, wonderful people, hardworking people. It happened to me, it didn't happen to them, out of the same environment. The, Life is Then not how do you respond to people that say it's luck? That, you know, people will say, it is luck, Ken Langrown, you grew up in the dugout, you got to the on-deck circle, right. you were lucky you went to Bucknell at home plate, right. and then you had to wander around the baseball diamond. People say the President of the United States grew up, he started on third base. How do you respond to that? So what? The question is, what did he do after third base? Did he steal home? Some people, I would respectfully suggest, Mr. No. Langone, that a large part of America would suggest that Donald Trump stole home. Great. That means you ran fast to get home before the ball got there. That that's been his life, but within the politics of the moment in this nation, does it bother you that we have found a point of an immense lack of civility? That's another story. Yes, yes. Yes, but on the other hand, we have had all the civility in Washington for so many years. Exactly. And nothing That's got what done. Mr. Trump would say. Well, well nothing I'm, got well, done. I'm saying that. I'm saying we had all of the civility. China's been eating at us for 40 years. We've got an issue with entitlements going on for the, what started out as a wonderful program. Social Security is now, to me, needing desperate repair. What the hell am I? I just, well, my wife and I just gave a nine-figure gift so kids can go to medical school free. And I'm getting $2,800 a month from the government. Something's wrong. And my wife's getting 1100 more on top of that. Yeah, but she's spending it. You're giving it No, she's charity. not. She gives it to the Boys Club in New York. With, 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 within this discourse in the moment we're in, a huge body of Republicans and Democrats want to find a middle ground. You just said, and others have said, the middle ground didn't get anything done. Do you look at the polarity? No, I didn't say the middle ground. I said civility. All this nice, proper behavior, and let's be, let's be nice to each other and all that nonsense. And then they go out in public and they beat up on each other, call it for what it is. What kind of candidate does the Democratic Party need to make for a really legitimate debate and campaign in 2020? Take what we have and offer ways to improve it. What they're talking about will degrade the system. It'll degrade. Go to Venezuela. You want to see what the results of this giveaway program is? This is where Venezuela got off the tracks. Venezuela was one of the wealthiest countries. How do you respond? There's 20 candidates, let's say, to pick a round number that are running for the Democratic Party. I'm going to suggest X of them, 8, 10, 12, whatever the number is, thinks of big business is bad. And they even think almost of entrepreneurial business within greater Manhattan and across this nation is bad. How do we get to back to a pro-business Democratic Party? A guy like Erskine Bowles. I pleaded with Erskine Bowles, please run. A guy like Mike Bloomberg. Guys that have done it, and more importantly, guys that understand, l l preserve what's great about us, fix what needs to be fixed, and get rid of what's bad about us. 
But you look at an Erskine Bowles, you look at Simpson, Senator Simpson, these guys have heart. These guys really, Mike Bloomberg, Mike Bloomberg, he didn't need to be mayor for 12 years, but look what he did. He made a genuine effort to improve public education. Why can't these individuals get a more public voice across America? Do you blame this on the modern media that we become so fractious in our nightly battles that the middle ground of Mr. Bowles and others can't be heard? The media has contributed its share to the mess, no doubt about it. On the other hand, on the other hand, I think the American people need to take some of the blame as well. You know, beware of Greeks bearing gifts. All this free for nothing, there ain't no such thing as free. You don't pay me now, you pay me later. Okay, remember that ad, that Fram ad? You can pay me now, you can pay me later. You're gonna pay, at some point, and who's gonna pay the bill? The young kids, I plead with kids, I, I was at Georgetown last week, I spoke at George. I'm telling them, I'm ripping you off, I'm stealing from you. I'm getting $2,800 a month that you can't afford well, to pay me. I want to turn to business right now. I should mention, folks, to be uh, uh, appropriate here, that Michael Bloomberg, of course, uh, the owner of Bloomberg LP, along with a number of other good people, this television and radio stations as well. I need to turn to business. It's trees to the skies. I know you visited with Mr. Bezos in the recent months and years as well. Everybody's got Amazon, Apple, and the others on the brain. Can they, do you extrapolate out Bezos' success into the coming decade? I think Bezos is a true pioneer. I think he has forced all of us in business to think about alternative ways to reach the customer. I don't think Home Depot's focus and effort on online sales would be as passionate and as profound as it is if Amazon hadn't shown us. What's the best practice from Amazon Home Depot can take? I mean, right now, I would respectfully say just the uh, website uh, how has do been we, early and competitive, but you need, they need to improve. Yeah, how do we get the product to the customer faster and cheaper? Period, it's that simple. The customer wants to stay home and watch television. You got all this content, you got blogging, you got mm -hmm. streaming, you got this, that. Everybody wants to stay home and watch television today or whatever they watch or a football game. So they don't want to have to get in their car, drive to Home Depot, buy a gallon right. of paint, and come. Now, by the way, that creates its own problem. What do we do within traditional business in America? I think of the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company, 3M Challenge. Mr. Roman visited with us earlier this week. There's a complex industrial company, doesn't have the advantages of Home Depot and Amazon. What do they do to write problems, to make things better? Triple M, Triple M was a master at innovation. Go look at the sales of Triple M, of right. new products in the first year those products were in it. Post-it notes. Who would have dreamed a piece of paper? And they had a whole managerial process, folks, uh, uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago that was iconic. Everybody they have to from make it. sure they celebrate that. They have to make sure they respect that. They have to make sure that every time their salesman shows up at Home Depot, they got a product that we mm -hmm. say, oh, my God, our customers want it. How do you respond, Ken Langone, to the corporate ethos today of cutting costs? I mean, there can be always a management and a budgeting quarter to quarter. I'm sure you've lived in those too many of those meetings. But how do you respond to people that say, we need to cut costs, that's where we need to start? You need to cut costs that you don't need to have. There are a lot of costs. Home Depot, 480,000 associates mm -hmm. right now. Every one of those kids is critical to our success. They're not a cost, right. they're an asset. But you have to pay them to have the asset. On the other hand, if we're frivolous, if we spend money in ways that don't make sense, and you take a step back and say, what do we get for it? This doesn't make sense. How do you respond, and I love capitalism, an American story, how about I love hardware stores? How do you respond to the hardware stores that you put out of business now 10, 20, 30 years on? Because we're more efficient. Because we offer them, we offer the customer more of what they wanted than they did. Just like somebody will put us out of business if they go around us to our customer and give the. If we didn't address the people that want to shop online, right? Amazon. The would have, okay, I know you're a huge fan of Elizabeth Warren, the senator from Massachusetts. Oh, stop. stop. I, I want to be a Republican. I want you to address the, the next thing coming down the pike, which is Ida Tarbell Redux, and that is Amazon is a Standard Oil company of New Jersey. Oh. Where are we going to get where these technological monster successes, massive revenue growth, oh. profit, uh, huge free cash flow growth, and somebody says break it up? They said break up Home Depot. No, they never did that. Guess what? I think what you want to do is study Amazon and learn what they're doing right 
and try to improve on that. Mm -hmm. I give Jeff Bezos an enormous amount of credit. He saw a void, he developed the technology, and he's doing it. Uh, I said earlier with you, I, I said, and the thing that I saw in him that I admire, that's a killer combination, humility and smart. Humility and smart. Do we have humility and smart in this president? The Steve Moore debacle of the last 48 hours. The, the what the idea hell has Steve Moore got to do with Jeff Bezos? It doesn't. I'm, I'm, this is called a segui. Come on, <laughs> stay with me. We only got a few more minutes to go. Ken Langone, this is absolutely critical. There's a, there's a death of experts. We're afraid of experts. The president's not comfortable with fancy PhDs at the Fed as well. How do we get back to where we understand smart people from Bucknell can get the job done? just by giving us a chance. Look, there's two guys that I know well and intimately that if they were on the Fed board or if one of them was chairman. Can you please I, name him? Yeah, sure. Larry Lindsay yep. and Kevin Walsh. Okay. These guys are street smart. They're sensible. A lot of common sense. Uh, humble. And know what they're talking Everybody about. Everybody underestimated Kevin Warsh. He appeared with us today, folks, on Bloomberg. Oh, did he? That out on our digital that. product. But if we look at Governor Warsh, it's a textbook example of yeah, 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 yeah. And he, by, by acclaim, he delivered the goods. Right. Why can't this president find a Kevin Warsh? Look, I don't know the process by which they select people. On the other hand, let me give, let me throw a bouquet at the president. Bill Barr is one hell of an attorney general. He's been pilloried here in the last 40 hours. God bless hours. him. God bless him. Because you know what? He's getting near them. He's getting near. He's, this, this investigation about the dossier, well, let's wait. And okay, I, I got to ask you, can the attorney general move towards representing the people of the nation and justice, or is he going to be the president's lawyer? No, he's going to be the lawyer for the administration. He's in the man's cabinet. The secretary of defense is the secretary of defense of the president of the United States.